Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to the second round of Legendary Tournament in Vegan Z Tata Steel Chess 2021 uh, and I would like to show you the best game of round two. So let me introduce you the players. Alexander Donchenko, who was born in Russia, however, raised in Germany. So he represents uh, Germany. Uh, he's ranking 2668. Uh, Alexander is on the 75 first position uh, in the world ranking. He's 22 years old and in this game he's going to play as white. And his opponent, number two in the world, Fabiano Caruana, uh, who played against Magnus Carlsen for the world champion uh, title three years ago. Uh, and he's ranking 2823. Uh, Fabiano is half Italian, half American. He represents USA at this moment. He's 28 years old and in this game he's going to play as black so without further ado let's see what happened uh, on the board alexander opened with d4 we have d5 c4 c6 and um, knight f3 knight f6 and now is a little bit tricky moment where um i would like to just mention one game uh in my videos previous videos which you should check uh because knight c3 or e3 uh which move to play these are the two main lines so we have um, the three knights uh, variation or we have e3 um, quiet game if we play knight c3 it's a very very tricky uh, because bishop f5 is a mistake it's quite a big mistake because after c takes on d5 there is a lot of pressure the queen can come to b3 uh, pressure the central upon pressure b7 which cannot be defended by the bishop uh, which was on c8 uh, and this is very very tricky i would like to just show you the, the game uh, where Ding Liren won in the miniature game against Maxime Vasil Lagraf. Maxime Vasil Lagraf uh, tried to play the, the Slav defense, but he failed in this um, in this game against Ding Liren. Uh, check over there. This is this is really really a great game. It's if you play Slav defense, it's good to know actually uh, this little details. Uh, but in our game we have e3 so there is no problem bishop f5 can be played immediately and now after knight c3 uh, it's also very safe to support the pawn on the d5 so there are no tricks with queen b3 anymore we have knight h4 attacking the bishop now bishop can go to g6 immediately or first to the central square on e4 inviting f4 f3 so we have f3 uh, by Donchenko uh, and now Bishop uh, just retreat to g6 and it's gonna stay over there of course uh, until it could go somewhere but then of course uh, the knight gonna exchange um, uh, for the bishop uh, and mess up the pawn structure on the on the king side and black will be forced to decide where to castle or maybe uh, stay with the king uh, in the center or maybe on the in the f8 square uh, we have bishop d2 so Donchenko of course doesn't want to castle on the on the king side as this gonna be uh, a little bit compromised after f3 uh, the pawn structure is um, compromised a bit and also once this uh, bishop is exchanged then black gonna have the open a5 so it's a good idea to actually uh, castle on the queen side we have bishop e7 and now we have knight g6 h takes on g6 as i said this rook now have the semi open h file we have queen c2 pre preparing to castle knight b to d7 we have um, castle on the queen side as planned and now a6 now a6 is a very very typical move in the slav in the semi-slav meran variation for example uh, and it gives the opportunity for black to play the very typical maneuver here where this pawn is taken and once the bishop takes uh, then we can go for the b5 followed by the c5 very very typical continuation in this pawn structures uh, we have one game in the database where bishop e1 was played with the idea of playing g4 bring the bishop to this diagonal um, so this is also very very typical however black in that game which we have in the database played b5 immediately without even considering to take on c4 first uh, which would which was quite a mistake because black just locked all the queen side and and won that game after queen c8 then g4 uh, and then standard continuation a uh, white already stands um, stands better here 
and black doesn't have even counterplay on the on the queen side the king is completely safe uh, on the queen side uh, but in our game donchenko goes for g4 very aggressive immediately we have d takes on c4 so donchenko was waiting with the bishop this is another um, idea in this opening if this bishop is moved um, then black gonna actually uh, capture the pawn on c4 and um, white is going to uh, make two moves in the opening with the bishop so just you know little de little detail uh, this is why g4 we have first um, we have d takes on c4 and now bishop c4 uh, b5 very typical as i told you so the bishop has to retreat bishop e2 and now immediately c5 uh, and now how to react on that so there are a couple of ways we have to do something otherwise uh, white is going to have the isolated uh, pawn uh, but without the possibility of constructing dangerous attacks here so that's gonna be a, a huge weakness so um, the best move in the position probably is taking this um, this pawn exchanging and after knight c5 just calmly go with the king to b1 so always move king to b1 and um, this is pretty good move and for example after rook c8 h4 very typical attack queen c7 the game can continue the king is going to stay uh in the center or maybe if needed to in the in the f8 square so that could be played however donchenko goes for a very sharp variation and he sacrificed the pawn so we have d5 uh, knight d5 knight d5 e takes on d5 and now it looks like fabiano has a very strong pawn structure which can just roll um, the position of the of the white king but at the same time uh, white will attack the position of the black king so for now it looks like white are much slower uh, we have f4 now uh, so attacking on the king side and now b4 and it looks like now c4 gonna be very dangerous and followed by b3 with the attack on the queen and on the pawn uh, and once the c file uh, is open it can be very very dangerous uh, donchenko started with e4 saying okay if you if you go for the c4 i'm gonna take your central pawn and your pawns are not gonna be as strong as as it looks like so fabiano uh, caruana taught for a while he played d4 and now his plan uh, to play c4 has to be postponed uh, and now donchenko actually had time to play very calm another uh, moment in the game where he should go for the king b1 very important move because uh, fabiano caruana has to prepare this c4 move it's gonna take some time uh, for example knight b6 and then he will have the time for h4 and this still cannot be played as c4 is controlled by the bishop and the, and the queen so still needs a lot of preparation so king b1 was important here however we have e5 uh, it looks like donchenko is in the in the hurry here uh, this actually gave uh, fabiano caruano the opportunity to push c4 he didn't play that but it looks like it's uh, it shouldn't be played however after c4 uh, if the pawn is taken look at this what can happen bishop c4 rook c8 it looks like very very dangerous the king and the queen on the same uh, file open file it looks like very dangerous b3 defending cementing this position but now knight b6 uh, and it looks it starts to be a little bit scary here uh, first we would like to probably move the queen away uh, but the problem is that after a knight c4 bishop c4 uh, we have the move queen d5 so this move e5 um, it was a mistake because now the queen can come to d5 uh, it was controlled by the by, by this pawn before and now this pawn cannot be defended so this is the problem king b1 let's say uh, and now after rook c4 black is up the pawn with much more active pieces central centralize the queen for example uh, open h file so the rook can come um, anytime to the game uh, and this is definitely a winning position for for black the king a uh, white king is compromised on b1 um, and this king uh it's, it's quite in safe position as i said f f8 is just a matter of time so this was possible by fabiano caruana he missed that opportunity he just uh, prepared slowly prepared because c4 pawn uh, is coming anyway How 
However, and now Donchenko missed the chance to actually get the much better position. What he could do, it, it's pretty much illogical because he wants to uh, keep these pieces controlling c4, it's obvious. However, he could centralize the queen. And now, uh, why to centralize the queen? He can, uh, for example, push this pawn uh, and uh, later with the queen on c3 and the pawn um, on e6, it can be very unpleasant, very dangerous actually uh, to continue the game for Fabiano Caruana. So uh, that is a pretty nice initiative. Uh, now, the point is that c4 cannot be really played here. Uh, it looks like this is the point, c4 and c3 is coming however simply b3 and this pawn is attacked three times uh, of course the bishop cannot be taken uh, because the pawn is pinned the queen is uh, on d8 is hanging here uh, d3 doesn't work because it's gonna cost the piece uh, this this knight is uh, defended by the queen, but also the queen is defending the rook. So this is the problem that the queen is hanging and white is winning here. So uh, black would be forced to exchange the queens here. Uh, however, after rook d4, white not only wins back the pawn, but win another pawn. For example, queen e4, rook e4, now the knight is under attack. Uh, so this is the problem. Uh, if the knight is defended, then this pawn, uh, after exchanging this pawn, gonna fall. Um, and um, yeah, not much can be done. If the if the knight is moved, then of course we're gonna have bishop c4 uh, and white have one extra pawn and winning position. So uh, that was chance actually to go for the queen e4 now for Alexander Donchenko. However, uh, he is in hurry. Looks like he is in a big hurry, and then he played e6 immediately and now Fabiano Caruana said okay now queen e4 is coming so this is why he played queen d5 immediately controlling not only e4 but also uh, controlling this pawn um, and, and on f7 and also at the same time attacking a2 this looks like a very very beautiful move we have e takes on f7 and now king goes to f8 and look at this the king is completely safe there uh, the bishop is defending the position the, the the pawn is defending and this pawn is the, the best defender ever it of course cannot be captured by white pieces so uh, this king is really really safe on f8 uh, and now it looks like okay this pawn is under attack so what to play so there are a couple of options it seems like uh, b3 is necessary here however uh, it's of course b by uh, some time for donchenko however a5 is inevitable and then a4 is gonna be played so whatever white plays now uh, for example um, bishop d3 looks like very very attractive move with the plan of centralizing the bishop and, and winning at least the exchange however look at this after a4 bishop a4 this line is completely insane a takes on b3 now saying okay you take my queen i'm gonna take your queen with the attack on the rook so a takes on b3 is the mandatory and after rook a1 a king b2 it looks like black is completely losing because this rook is under attack the queen is under attack however there is one beautiful move which is winning here and i would like to actually to pause you to pause the video this is not the line which was played in the game However, this is so beautiful that it's a good actually to find the winning continuation for black while I enjoy my cup of tea. Okay, ready? Uh, I'm not sure if Fabiano Caruana uh, enjoyed the tea as I did in this moment, uh, but look at this picture. Fabiano Caruana is thinking very intensively. Uh, this is the picture from the tournament, official uh, tournament picture. If you want to see more of this picture, you can check a uh, Tata Steel website. And the winning move in this position is actually Bishop F6. And it's shocking move. Now, the problem is that bishop d5 cannot be played uh, because we're gonna have d3 with check, with the attack on the queen. Moreover, the king has nowhere to go. Look at this. The rook controls all of these squares. The bishop defends the rook at delivering the check and also controls uh, c3. 
quite shocking, quite shocking continuation. If you found it, I'm really, really impressed. Um, so probably something like bishop c3 and b takes on c3 with the check. Uh, now the king can take the rook, but of course we're gonna have d takes on c2. Uh, and after moving the rook, wherever the rook is moved, for example, rook d2 e1, uh, this would be the checkmate in one, but of course a first deliver the check uh, and after distracting the rook uh, then we're gonna have knight d5 and black is completely winning here this pawn gonna fall uh, and we're gonna have two pieces for the rook and these pawns are still very very dangerous if the bishop get to the to the d4 gonna solidify the position and the position of, of white is just hopeless so after bishop f6 you cannot just uh, take the queen and if you try to block the pawn which looks like very very strong move indeed it's a strong move but then another shocking move which we have to find is queen e4 uh, so after queen e4 we're gonna have d3 again with the check uh, the rook controls all of the squares and uh, the bishop and the pawns control all of the squares so the only move here uh, if the queen d4 then we're gonna have the checkmate if the queen e4 then we're gonna have the the rook has the time to actually exchange so rook d1 rook d1 and after rook h1 uh, the bishop is pinned, the queen is pinned, everything is pinned, uh, king b1 unpinning both, but now it's time to actually exchange, uh, and after king f7, black has a winning position as well, this pawn gonna fall, it can be blocked very easy, uh, this pawn is a very very strong pawn, not that easy to actually uh, uh, exchange it, this, because the rook can for example defend it, and white king cannot actually support to, to, to win that pawn because all the all the squares in front actually are um, covered by the by the black pawn so uh, that would be very very interesting um, uh, if b3 is played it, it's actually uh, the best move in the position but as you see it would lead to completely crazy position uh, we have h4 so donchenko maybe played even a more aggressive move now saying um you're gonna take my pawn on a2 i'm gonna take your pawn um on g G6. So it looks like very, very sharp. But as I said, the king is quite safe over there. And it's very difficult to imagine that this pawn uh, is gonna be attacked twice uh, anytime soon. Not that easy for black. The bishop is blocked by the pawn uh, and also by this pawns. So not that easy to bring the bishop, uh, maybe with the pawn, however, it's a couple of moves uh, to actually do anything on the on the king side. But of course, Fabiano Caruana is on move now. So we have b3, bishop e1, and now c4. So rolling the position of the, of the king. The pawns are attacking. Uh, of course, this pawn is lost. So we have rook d4. Uh, and now knight a4. Now attacking the pawn on b2. So queen b1 is pretty much forced. And now bishop a3. And now the thing is that the bishop cannot be taken because of b2 with the check. Uh, if the king goes somewhere far, then the queen is lost if the queen goes to the c2 then we're gonna have queen b3 and after king d2 yes the queen is safe however now we're gonna have queen c3 with check with the attack on the rook and um, there is only one move here king d1 now queen d4 picking up the rook with the check again and now if bishop d2 uh, then rook d8 and this bishop cannot really be defended if it's defended this is the only one move uh, then the problem is that after queen d2 queen d2 we're gonna have this beautiful checkmate so the bishop cannot be taken this is why we have queen a2 uh, but it doesn't work as well because now we have b b takes on a2 and here Alexander Donchenko actually set up very nice trap he played king c2 saying if you want you can actually uh, promote to the queen uh, but what would happen if uh, Fabiano Caruana promote to the queen uh, he still have a winning position but um, unlikely it's gonna be easy that would be probably very long um, end game because after b bishop before and check the queen of course is lost so bishop before and after a uh, rook a1 uh, the knight is under attack so probably knight b6 uh, and now this pawn can be taken um, or even white can do more fancy way uh, get this pawn 
exchange it for um for this pawn and could try to win with the pawns on the on the king side as we have three pawns against one uh, however keep in mind that two pawns for one knight um fabiano caruana with the black pieces still stands better here probably he would manage to to win however he is not interested in such shenanigans and he simply played rook b1 as announcing the checkmate in two uh do you see the checkmate in two uh if if you play any random move like g5 let's say you want to go for g6 and defend the pawn the problem is that after rook b2 you don't really have the moves as all of these squares are controlled by the by the black pieces so you don't have even uh, a lot of moves here king d1 and that's gonna be the checkmate so that's not even possible this is why we have rook d8 sacrificing the exchange is forced uh, other moves would be for example bishop before sacrificing the bishop uh, but exchange of course it's uh, it's slightly better so we have rook d8 uh, and only now b takes on a3 uh, we have also c3 now uh, saying okay if you take uh, the pawn i'm gonna win your bishop so that's not really the greatest idea and if you try to defend it otherwise you're gonna lose the bishop i'm gonna promote to the queen and win the game so this is why uh, donchenko goes for bishop g3 now controlling a1 uh, but now we have rook d2 with check there are only two moves if the if the king goes to the to the c1 we're gonna have the checkmate of course so donchenko went for king b3 but after knight c5 he resigned uh, why did he resign because whatever uh, he plays he gonna lose badly uh, he can pick up one of the pawns but look now what's gonna happen knight e4 with the check with defending the the rook and also winning the bishop with the fork on the bishop and the rook this is just amazing so whatever the king do does uh, like king c4 we're gonna have knight g3 the rook is under attack and it doesn't really matter where the rook goes uh we're gonna just simply win uh, another piece and we have extra rook and extra knight uh, to win the game so this is why after knight c5 donchenko just resigned and i would like to just show you other scores as i promised maxim vasil lagraf uh, draw against alireza firuzia it was pretty lucky alireza firuzia was in the huge huge trouble but he defended the position uh, Magnus Carlsen tried to push David Anton uh, but David Anton uh, also defended very bravely uh, Radosław Wojtaszek was in the huge huge troubles Arian Tari uh, couldn't capitalize uh, his advantage and it was another draw uh, same with Anish Giri and Jordan Van Forest we had a draw Anish Giri uh, had a slight advantage in the end game but also couldn't capitalize the, the rogue end game uh, this is the game where Fabian Piano Caruana won and also big surprise Jan Krzysztof Duda lost to Nick Nils Grandelius Jan Krzysztof Duda tried to win the game but he risked too much and in the interview Nils Grandelius said that he was lucky that he was familiar with this position he achieved that position um, plenty times in his game so he exactly knew what to play against Jan Krzysztof Duda uh, and it was pretty much a very very comfortable win and uh, Hare Krishna Pentala Hare Krishna a draw against Andrei Yesipienko now Nils Grandelius um, unexpectedly uh, is a sole leader so he has two points after two rounds uh, Fabiano Caruana Anish Giri and Magnus Carlsen with one and a half points get the second uh, place so um, that's uh, quite a surprise that Nils Grandelius after two rounds is a sole leader so this is what happened in the day two and I hope you like the video if you like press like if for some reason you don't like it press unlike and if you don't want to miss other games and report from the day three press subscribe smash the bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one